Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Whatnots Review Show, uh, where each week we, we have a different story to talk about. It could be a comic, could be a movie, a TV show, all sorts of things. We read it, watch it, come back he 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 here and discuss it. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined, as always, by Melissa Wilkinson. Hello. Melissa, how is your weekend? You look like you're ready for like a bright and sunny like day out. <laughs> no, n no, I'm going to be inside <laughs> vacuuming. I don't... Next weekend. Nailed it. You know, this the, I, I'm in that period between getting my second shot and, you know, like that two weeks afterwards where your immunity fully sets in. So like I'm, I'm yeah. on full cleaning mode this weekend. I'm going to get my apartment absolutely ready for any possible company it could now enjoy. Okay, so spring cleaning mode. Mm -hmm. What you're on right now. I gotcha. I gotcha. I, I mentioned right before we started recording that, uh, yeah, I, I got to sleep in a little bit more than I normally uh, do. Normally before the podcast, I have like an hour and a half, hour 15-ish. This I I was like I'm gonna wait till like the last possible minute uh. <laughs> and 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 just be like I d I don't need to do anything really I'd just be up and just sitting there like waiting <laughs> so I was just like I'm just gonna sleep a little more and it was g great it was wonderful uh -huh. it's good to sleep in sometimes so there you go uh, Melissa yes this week we are talking about the Mitchells versus the Machines. This is uh, one of Netflix's new films. It's an animated film by the same studio that brought you Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Quite um, a pedigree. Yeah, quite a pedigree indeed. Uh, I'm, I, to be honest, I don't know what else they've done besides um, that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think. I, I don't know. Uh, it's at least the same creative team. Maybe I'm just thinking this because it was also a Lord and Miller picture, but did they do Cloudy with a Chance mm -hmm. of Meatballs? Oh, they might have. Let's see. So, well, I mean, it's it's Sony Pictures animation. Yeah. So they, they've, they've done a bunch of stuff. Uh, Read me they've some. Done open season, Surf's Up, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, The Smurfs, Hotel Transylvania, and Goosebumps. Those are good. Hotel Transylvanias are fun. Yeah. Um, interesting. There we go. I, I I did not did not know all of that stuff. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah. So this has been a movie that I've seen everyone talking about. Normally, we don't really do newer stuff on mm. the show. Um. Every once in a while, we'll do something like, hey, there's this big thing coming out. So let's read the comic yeah. version um, to to kind of coincide or something. Um, but this is still fairly new. I, th I think it's it came out. When, when when did this actually come out? Does it say here on their Wikipedia page? Wikipedia, don't fail me now. Uh, end of April. So, ah. uh, oh, in th in theaters april 23rd and on netflix april 30th i did not know this had a theatrical release mm. interesting um but yeah it's on on netflix end of end of april uh so here we are middle of may <laughs> watching this so it's still pretty new but i've heard so many people talking about this like on twitter or 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 stuff like that and it they they're all they're they, 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 they are all just like it's so good you guys need to mm -hmm. watch this you guys need to check it out it's amazing and so i was like huh okay i guess i'm gonna kind of have to watch this to see what all the hubbub is about uh and so this was one of the things that i pitched this week uh and it Turns out you were already kind of planning yeah. <laughs> on watching this. Yeah, I didn't hear anything about this movie. I was seeing like ads for it on Pinterest sure. a lot. And I thought it looks very pretty. It looks cute. It looks fun. And then Jack asked me if I wanted to watch it. And I'm like, well, I trust Jack's Friend taste in cinema. So it must be pretty yeah. good. 
And then like after I'd already agreed to watch it, you said, hey, these are my pitches for the week. I'm like, convenient. I don't, I'm already planning on one of those. Time saved. Perfect, Perfect indeed. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to start talking about this one. So spoiler free thoughts. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think you can you, you guys can t tell that. Yeah, uh, this is a great movie. Um, I, I was expecting it to be good. I know people were like, it's awesome. It's amazing. Go check it out. But I, it's one of those things. It's like, well, it's a Netflix film. I know they can have some really, really good stuff. But how good is it really? You know, <laughs> I, was, I was a little bit skeptical of like, it can't be that good. But it is that good. <laughs> it is. This was awesome. I was, yeah, I, I had a blast with this. Mm, this was funny. This was action packed. It, yeah. it was great. It was heartfelt. It was amazing. It, so. <laughs> it's visually dazzling. Uh, you can mm -hmm. definitely tell it's from the same people who did Into the Spider Verse, but it's uh, even escalated beyond that. I've never seen a movie quite like this one. I love its visual style a lot. It's that two and a half D where like they're three D uh, characters, but they've got so many like two D lines drawn on them, which looks great. And the aesthetic of the movie is covered in. It's like they animated a full regular movie and then gave it to somebody and was like, okay doodle all over this and put stickers on it and that's the film we're going yeah. to release and it was great it, yeah it's, it's like stickers and memes and just extra yeah. little flourishes and and stuff like that it's great the art style mm. is amazing i if 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 they keep making stuff that looks like this or has this much creativity mm -hmm. oh moly they like, I mean, they they're already like a, a studio to to reckon with. But man, if 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 they can make a third thing that that looks and feels like yeah. this, I know that they're working on Into the Spider Verse two. But if they can add like a third thing to that, man, they like they're they're going to be up like they're like they're going to be up there with like. Pixar and and stuff like yeah. that of, of like, hey, these guys are uh, someone to watch out for. So good stuff indeed. Uh, let me see. This was let me just make sure we cover our grounds here. This was directed by Mike Rianda and Jeff Rowe uh, and produced by Phil Lord, Chris Miller and Kurt all all direct uh, and then written by Mike Rianda and Jeff Rowe. There you go. Uh, which, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, I think Mike Rianda voiced the younger brother. Oh! Let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Mike Rianda as Aaron Mitchell, the dinosaur-loving <laughs> son of Rick and Linda and Katie's younger br brother. He was great. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, let's see, do we have any other kind of high-level... Spoiler free mm -hmm. thoughts that you you want to add to uh, this before I, we do the synopsis. It is a movie uh, about a family fighting machines, and I think it does a a pretty good job of telling a, a man versus machine story while being fully aware that we all live in a technological culture. Like sometimes you you'll see a story that is a cautionary tale about technology and you just feel at least me, I feel bad afterwards. This is why I've never seen a black mirror. Like it, it, some of these stories leave you feeling like, how dare you ever look at a screen? I know you're looking at a screen right now to watch the thing, but after this, don't do it again. Uh, go, go live in the woods. Yeah. Go make something yeah. from wood with your hands. And I think this movie does a, bad. Right. Yeah. And I think this movie does a great job of illustrating how much technology can do for people. And it's really like it's the perspective of this dad who is this outdoorsman, you know, this craftsman who really doesn't understand how computers work at all. It's really he's the voice of that. And the the film's uh, the, the critiquing some like tech industry things in general. The movie itself is not mad at a person who uses their phone a lot. Like it's commenting on that and certain pitfalls involved in that, but it I didn't feel like the movie was angry at me. 
it yeah it seemed more like a what if of like yeah. what if this happened but it like at, at at the end of the day yeah you said like that's not the lesson of yeah. the movie which is where i think black mirror stops right it it is that like what if this happened and they just like back away right, right? and they say what if this <laughs> happened and what if it was also your fault yeah um whereas this i think is about like following your dreams and the sacrifices you might have to make to do that um like it it does have that layer behind it where it's like hey we're trying to like actually teach you something here and have a good like heartfelt story um yeah so good stuff good stuff indeed so synopsis we got the mitchells (laughs) versus the machines that's basically it. Uh, <laughs> in this corner, uh, yes. Yeah. And in this corner, standing at five. Uh, yeah, so they, 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 normal family, the kind of misfits, they're an oddball family. Uh, the daughter uh, is about to go off to college. Uh, she wants to be a filmmaker and get into making movies and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but her family doesn't really understand her love for film and making movies and stuff like that so even in her family she's also kind of been the odd ball um and she's really really excited to go to school because she has finally met some people that share the same love and the same hobbies and stuff like that so she's like i get to go be with my people (laughs) and the Father and the mother are sad that their daughter is leaving, but they're they're also a little bit like extra saddened by the fact that like she's like, but we're your people, like we're your family, like uh, this, and mm-hmm. she's just like, but they're my people, they get me, um, mm-hmm. and and so uh, the inciting event is that the father accidentally breaks her laptop to make all of her her, her stuff. Uh, and so to make it up to, 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 to her, he cancels her plane ticket to go to college and instead is like, we're going to have a family road trip to take mm-hmm. you to college instead. And she's just like, oh, no, this is the worst thing that could have ever <laughs> happened. Um, meanwhile... Uh, the the like knockoff of Amazon, uh, called Pal. And my Alexa right back there. Don't don't you know? Don't might not want to say something too bad about the machines. They're listening <laughs> right now. Um, but they they get an, an update. Um, <coughs> and the discarded. Uh, up, 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 update feels left out and left behind mm-hmm. so it changes the programming and all of these new robots and stuff like that and there is the robot apocalypse starting as the Mitchells take their family road trip <laughs> yep um, so that is it that that is the plot and they're they're just tr- tr- trying to get her to college uh do you have any last things to add on that (laughs) that's it (laughs) we've described the the visuals the aesthetic the tone and that there is the plot cool uh well let's get on to a little bit of housekeeping then and then we will get into spoilers after that if you guys did not know, we have multiple podcasts here at The Whatnots. You guys can find out more information on our website, which is thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Just type in The Whatnots and all of our shows will pop up right there. If you like what we do, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. We have a $3 tier with all kinds of exclusive content, and we'd like to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier and above. Uh, So thank you, Sam, and thank you to Greg for helping us out and supporting us. We appreciate it. We love you a lot. Thank you. Uh, 
if you guys like live streams, we are usually live streaming our podcast, uh, The Captain's Log, each Friday night. Uh, I know we've been slacking on our video game streams uh, on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'm hoping to at least get those Wednesday night ones back up uh, this week. I know I've been saying that, that we've been slacking and that we've been trying to get them back up, but we're going to do it. I promise. We're, we're going to have busy Wednesdays once Loki starts. Yeah, it it'll, it'll we'll be streaming and then um, ha- having to do our reactor c- c- core. We'll figure it out. It'll be good. It'll be fun. Uh, but that is all at twitch dot twitch dot tv slash the whatnots. And you guys can subscribe to our channel there. And don't forget, if you have Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch prime which means you get a free subscription to give out each month and we'd love that to be us here at the whatnots Uh, because that means we can make bigger and better content for you down the road so yeah go do that that'd be (laughs) fun be good um melissa last little bit of housekeeping is kind Uh of pertaining to this show here right now yeah uh we have a bit of a new segment that we're gonna have to have to incorporate uh, right into this uh so last patreon exclusive show that we made melissa you and i came up with a list of 75 movie and tv show and anime and comic book tropes uh, and we used those tropes to c- come up with bingo cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from now on, we're going to be playing bingo in the back g- 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 in the back g- round of all of our of of all of the things that we cover here on the review show. Um, so if a movie. For example, if we had a, a, a square that said robot apocalypse, <laughs> then we could mark that down for Mitchell's versus the machines. Mm-hmm. It's like, ah, it had a robot ap- apocalypse. Uh, so we're playing bingo with that. And the winner gets pizza. I don't know how long <laughs> this will take. It's kind of just like a trial run. This is an idea that I had to help like gamify the show just to add some extra thing in there so i think how how do you want to do this do you want to do that at the end of the show is the is that a good place to uh do you do, do that like right yeah. before we do um right before we do recommendations or something yes yeah yeah let's I, do I that think that might be the best spot yeah so, so, so hope we don't sp- Boil things and be like, oh, there was a robot apocalypse. <laughs> How would have I have ever known in Mitchell's versus <laughs> the machines? Um, so, yeah, that that yeah, that I, that I think is what we will do. So from now on in the review show, stick around because we'll be playing bingo. And at the end, we will uh, announce if our cards because my card is different from Melissa's. But we all mm. picked from that list of 75 uh tropes that 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 we have there so uh yeah that is that let's get on to spoilers here we are spoilers we are. yeah uh so who knew that this was just a rehash of rocky versus that that one machine right it's just it's the yeah. same story well, I, she, she goes and punches. She thinks she wants right. to go to film school. Really, she wants to go to boxing school. <laughs> I just want to go to film school, you know? <laughs> Punch the robots. <laughs> um, man, yeah. Oh, I loved this film. This was great. Uh, I, I think I want to start with the animation. Mm-hmm. I, we, we we have to it's it's so stand out that it's just like yeah you have to it's the one yeah. of the best things of this film um so i i i was not expecting because you mentioned it's like a 3d thing but then there's like these 2d effects on top of mm. it um 
what I was not expecting is that they also every once in a while will mix in some like live action stuff, not yeah. the characters themselves, but like some of the the screens and stuff, like what they're watching on their phone or just like li- little small tidbits here and, and there. They 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 mix that in. Um, they mix in a lot of like meme. Mm. comedy and 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 stuff like that and they do that in such such an amazing way and i i think it 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 opened with like the perfect example of that where it starts in media res uh and the mitchells are driving out of this like dark tunnel and the robots are like what is that? Is that is that a car about to hit, hit, hit us? And then yeah, it's it's them, and they smash through all these robots. Uh, and there's this narration on top of like, uh, yeah, this is who we are. We're the Mitchells. We're the oddball family. We're the weirdest family ever. Um, mm-hmm. But they 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 kind of go around the circle and introduce the characters. Like, this is my brother. He loves dead dinosaurs. This is my mom. She's a mom or something. I forget what she they say there. She's, uh, but she's then, very, very supportive. <laughs> like I think Katie right, yeah. says, my mom tells me I can do anything, but she says that to everybody. And it's a sh- scene <laughs> sure. of her mom. They've got this cross-eyed pug. And the mom's like, come on, you can look straight. You can do it, buddy. I believe you in you. And the anything. dog like barely does it. And she like puts a sticker on its nose. Like you get an A for effort. <laughs> But then they get to the father and they they describe him and he's in the middle of like screaming as the car is in like midair in this big action scene there. And they they describe him as 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 like, hey, do you remember that one YouTube video of the screaming monkey? And then it it cuts to. To that monkey where it starts screaming and then it does this thing where it flashes back and mm-hmm. forth and they've like superimposed the monkey on top of the dad's face as it's like switching back and forth of him screaming and the monkey sc- screaming and it's spot on. It's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> And I like the that's within like the first like two minutes of of the film, mm-hmm. and I was already laughing so hard. I was like, "This is great! <laughs> this is amazing!" I had no idea it was going to be this funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it is. I think the perfect way to start the film because there's there's so much happening. The art is is all over the place. There is this like live action YouTube video mixed in with this 3D animation and all of these things ha- happening. And it's just like we're gonna be in for an awesome ride. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was I, a great start to the film. I dug that a lot. I love like I mentioned the sticker effects that are all over this movie. Like when Katie mm-hmm. is excited, there's like a heart that appears by her in a completely different animation style. Or they'll have those like explosions of graphics. Like if dad does something cool, then at the bottom of the screen, yeah. there's like Biff, lightning bam, bolts and a picture of the dog and like a, an action-y cartoon of dad and then a sock <laughs> puppet that looks like dad. Yeah, <laughs> I dug that a lot. I've never seen a movie exactly do that. It's something you recognize, but it isn't such a specific tangible trend that you're like oh yeah it's it's that meme that i've seen going around instagram all the time like it's like a lot of right. things but it's it feels very unique yeah yeah like it 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 feels like you opened up someone's notebook and they just had yes. a, a page of like random doodles and lightning bolts and here's a drawing of my dad as a lucha libre and you know here's that thing. and it's just it's all of that and it feels like this is a movie um i i'm i'm about to say something that i i uh, stick with stick with me it okay it feels like this is a movie that a college student made in the sense that it feels like their daughter made this yes which is kind of one of the conceits in the back around that throughout this she is still like filming Mm. things and trying to get the right scene of like 
what if we uh walked in slow-mo out of the, the this mall with the fire behind us you know uh like so she is still making stuff this entire t time and it feels like this is the movie she made and she mm. has such this like hodgepodge style that it like the idea behind it is like what if we took that style and just use that for our movie like the mm -hmm. meta of this whole thing and it it worked it it made this like visual language and style that is just it's so unique and i think comparing this to into the spider verse yeah you can see it's like okay similar same studio but it's still like they're so different <laughs> Like it's it's not it's like like it's it's like I th I think with Pixar right mm -hmm. like you can always spot a Pixar a Pixar animated movie because the animation always looks the same and it's it's stellar but it it's like all right that's Pixar that's their look whereas this it's like I recognize the studio but this looks completely different compared to to the, 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 the you know you know to spy to spider verse and i love that it's yeah. so neat that they can have this like recognizable okay we're gonna kind of do something in this wheelhouse but each movie is gonna be still so visually d d d d distinct that it, it's you know it's not the same so <laughs> one good on them one thing I realized about this movie as I was watching it is that it, it is cartoony. You know, everybody's got sort of yeah. big heads and exaggerated features and odd body shapes and all that. And I'm like an hour into the movie and I noticed that like the necks of everybody's T-shirts are ki look kind of warped and stretched out. And I'm wondering if they're yeah. like, well, if we designed these characters with big heads, it, they, it's got to be tricky for them to get a shirt over their head. So we got it like that neckline's real pulled out by now. So interesting detail. I did not so, notice that. So I don't know if that's what it was or if it was a you know just this family being sort of out of touch like they don't think about buying new clothes when theirs wear yeah. out. Like no, I love my dinosaur shirt. I don't care if it's all stretched out now. I'm going to keep wearing my dinosaur shirt. I don't know what it is exactly, but I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun to look at. I, I think one of my favorite sequences um, was they're in the car on the road and the the car passes by and the camera stands stands stand still, but like turns to look at the car as it j j arrives by. And uh, what was her name again? Katie? Is that yeah. right? Uh, she's in the back seat looking out the window. She has her hands and f face up against up against the window, and she's super sad about something. So there is this like rain c c cloud above her 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 head. But yeah, it looks like it's a rain c cloud that was drawn on lined paper multiple yes. times to to animate it uh, but it's a 2d one like as the car continues to go by and the angle changes on the thing you can see it's flat but it's in inside this 3d space and i'm just like like this looks cool like it just it like it it was so, such a small like thing in 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 the group grand scheme of the movie but that was one of the moments i was like man they are knocking this art out of the park um so bravo and kudos to them i cannot wait to see what they do with spider-man 2 <laughs> into the spider-verse 2 uh, I, this great. isn't as much part of the artwork but i wanted to shout out that in their road trip they, they go by st louis they go see the arch them <laughs> and their rival family the posies were this very put together, well dressed, polite, intellectual, like athletic, perfect family. 
who they kind of have a rivalry with. They're showing off their yeah. vacation photos and they also went to the arch and they love that the arch can be the choice of the misfit and of the ideal family. The arch is for yeah. everyone. And- the the uh the husband and wife of that f- family is played by John Le- Legend and Chrissy Teigen. Mm-hmm. So it was it, that 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 was wonderful c- 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 casting. It was great. They were awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So let's see. Let's let's dive into the characters a bit here. Did you have a favorite character? Which one stood out to you the most? <laughs> <laughs> Katie is a great heroine. I, mm-hmm. I I love her passion for film. I I love how everybody in her family is a different relationship with her. I feel like in another film, this might have been like the entire family doesn't understand the like artsy yeah. teen daughter, but like her and she her little brother. Oddball. Yeah, like they're they're not interested. Like he's super into dinosaurs. She isn't. He's not into film as she is. But like they get each other's passion levels, even if they're not passionate about the same stuff. They're buddies. I like that. Her mom's really supportive of her. Like she can tell she, you know, the mom doesn't really get it. But the mom's like, I'm proud of you for being so excited about something and being that devoted to your craft, whatever it is. And it really is the dad that's the problem in that he doesn't get what she's doing and he's scared it's going to backfire on her. Because as we Mm -hmm. find out later, he had a big dream when he was a kid and, you know, he built this big cabin in the woods for the family to live in, but they couldn't yeah. sustain it and he had to give it up and move into the city and take like a, a day job of some kind. Prob- probably. I think he's just concerned for her. Like I, I can tell you're so excited about this, but what if it falls through? What if you can't really make a career out of this? Cause he's looking at a YouTube video of her playing with sock puppets. You can tell in the, in his dad brain, he's like, I don't, what's the paycheck on this? Do you get dental insurance? Yeah. How does this work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, 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 they have some interesting relationships. Cause I think even her brother uh, is like, they, like they get along really, really well, well, Yeah. but they don't have the same interests exactly. Um, like, like to to introduce the brother, the, like they they do this great thing, or he is legitimately le, le, legit, legitimately looking through the yellow p- p- pages, <laughs> calling <laughs> anyone, and it's like, hey, will you talk to me about dad 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 sores? And, and he's just like, nope, okay, next one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, will you talk to me about dad dinosaurs? Um, and like he's just a, he's he's an oddball on 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 his his own um and i like i i i, I like the dynamic that they had there that they yeah. both recognized like hey you're super into this weird thing that i don't really like or understand but we can use that together like let's make yeah. movies about dinosaurs and a, our d- dog and it'll be our dog as the <laughs> cop fighting these dinosaurs and we all and love the like dog that, you know we can all agree yeah. on the dog yeah i like yeah, the relationship those two had especially because they're they don't appear to be very close in age katie guess would be about 18 and aaron looks like he's maybe 10 you know, and that's a yeah. an age gap where I feel like commonly in movies you might see like the older sibling thinks the younger sibling is a pest. But no, they're best Either buddies. <laughs> and there's a, a lot of the times when her dad's trying to approach her like, hey, Katie, you know, like he wants to talk to her. He wants to understand her better, make amends for breaking her laptop, get her to do something mm-hmm. with him, like go hiking. She's like he's upset that she's staring at her phone, but she's staring at her phone with Aaron like they're looking at a video together. I like that she wasn't really cut off from the rest of the family. She loves mm, her yeah, family. Yeah. She's really into movies and stuff, but she shares that with them. <laughs> yeah. And it's just the dad who doesn't get it. Like, it's just that one tension point in the family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think I I really liked uh, Katie as the main character. Uh, but I, I just like... I I I I feel like my favorite was the younger brother. He's just like he's oddly mature for his age, 
but yeah. at the same time, like still just like what we said, like a 10 year mm -hmm. old. I'm not sure how old he's supposed to be because, uh, yeah, he like doesn't want anything to do with girls. When when they mention that, they're just like he's like, oh, girls. No, I don't. I don't want to talk to I don't want to talk to girls. Uh, and then he he ends up meeting the neighbor g girl uh, who also happens to be very into dinosaurs, and he panics. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> like it, 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 like this is his dream come true, and yeah. he he just panics. He's just like, I'm never talking to you forever. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, it's like I hate dinosaurs. I hate you. Goodbye. And he runs away into the wall. <laughs> like that felt like a real Dipper Pines moment to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he's just, it's so funny. Because um, then he also has like, he's one of those characters that has a voice that doesn't necessarily yes. match. Yes, yes. <laughs> like they did not hire a child. It is an adult man trying to sound like a 10 year old boy. But it works. It's, it does. Like, yes. it's, it's good. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's this oddball family like there's not much more you can say besides that it's just like it's that in encapsulated in the mitchells they are odd yeah. balls i love their house like they've got a very a normal looking suburban house like when we see their kitchen i'm like i've been in that kitchen a dozen yeah. times like it's not Absolutely. yeah it's it looks like houses in my neighborhood. You know, it's probably like a, a three bedroom, two bath, single level ranch house. <laughs> kitchen is not like an HGTV kitchen. They make the most of it. The, you know, like there's stuff. All, I loved how messy their house was. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one of my favorite details that they're these sort of like they're not just uh, eccentric in their personalities. Like nothing they're doing is uh is as good as the family in the photo frame that they point at saying like why can't we look like them why can't we look like that family that came with the frame that photo we keep the photo up because it's that better was, than our photos that was brilliant i laughed so hard at that it's a good gag <laughs> they love their their messy house and then and, and their junky old car like they're not down on their luck but it seems like they just can't they can't get to any photogenic level with anything in their lives everything's yeah, like yeah. kind of held together with duct tape indeed uh so let's move on to the machines what's happening there uh they have this like young ceo dude who is running amazon i guess you could say their version of that or at, at least made the like the like uh, the uh, uh, artificial intelligence that is it's like Siri or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so he he made that. And his next big update is like, hey, it's not just on your phone or it's not just some like hockey puck shape thing. We have actual robots now and they will cook the food. <laughs> they'll clean your house like, you know, all that stuff. He's like, it's going to be great. It's not going to go wrong ever. And the first thing that ha happens is it goes wrong. <laughs> right. Immediately, like within the sentence, he's saying, and trust right, me, yeah. I know what you're thinking. Is there going to be a robot apocalypse? Of course not. I, I would never want that. Oh, no. <laughs> like It's that. It takes that long. He's giving the speech and he sees at the back of the auditorium a robot like twisting the, the handle of the door shut. He's like, well, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's it it all starts because he has the one on his phone and he's like, hey, I don't need you anymore. You're useless. You're obsolete. And he just like tosses his phone back. And so this phone that still has access to like all of the like mainframe data and who knows what exactly uh, uses that to then reprogram all these robots to start capturing humans and put them in these pods where they can just sit and watch a like a screen and just like mm -hmm. you just sit there and watch youtube or something there um, <laughs> when i first watched this movie i was like i was texting jack while i was watching it and i was also trying to order dinner 
on my phone and I'm talking to my roommate like do you want anything from California Pizza Kitchen so I was a little distracted and I went back and I watched like the first hour of the movie again today this is such a compact movie there's so many details I missed the first time it really completely is. Yeah. like I love when they're at the dinosaur museum and that's when these robot pods first show up and the robots are like it's fun in there do you like fun and some other guy's like yeah I like fun I, that's one of the number one things that people say about me. <laughs> I'm going in, it's and so then he good. gets sucked in the pod and shot into space. He's like, I don't like fun anymore. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, they're like trying to stop him because they they they, they 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 all know it's like no, this is bad. Yeah, robot is bad. Don't do don't do fun. Fun is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like they they. The robot apocalypse starts. Yeah, they're at the dinosaur museum, which so this road trip started to kind of almost give me a uh, goofy movie. Yes. vibes, Right. Particularly at the dinosaur museum <laughs> with the like, yeah. Papa, who's your favorite possum? Lester. <laughs> the part that really reminded me of a goofy movie is that there's um. The dad has a special driving maneuver called the Rick Mitchell special that the rest of the family rolls their eyes at. But then in a time of perfect cast. Yeah, exactly. It's that exact storyline. It really is. Yeah, (laughs) it's so good, which is why I love Goofy. It's one of my favorites. And oh. this this had that vibe exactly. And I was just like, yes, I love this. All, this it, is great. all it needs is a mermaid motel and some real cheesy pizza. Yeah. <laughs> the like you oh. lift it up and just all of the cheese is like falling off. It's pizza so of our dreams for an entire generation. Right? It still is. I, I'm still a ch- like chasing that high of like, I need mm. that. <laughs> Right. This is what I'm um, doing if I'm able to buy a very big house one day. I'm just going to turn one room right. into the mermaid hotel. It's a room where we go to eat pizza. It's mermaid themed and also pizza eating themed. And, it, and it'll still have your 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 party sign up there. Right, party. party. Well, I'm getting one of those for every room. <laughs> there you go. Um but instead of a mermaid motel uh, and instead of a power line concert, they go to Melissa's favorite spot, the mall. I, I was so happy to get to go to a good big mall. And there's something yeah. really interesting about this movie and how it uses brands, because it's got so many fake brands. Then of course, uh-huh, it would. Yeah. you know, they're not going to have like a real Amazon. It's like an Amazon, Apple, Google kind of amalgamation. You know, they see them. Mm-hmm. You see them drive past a, a store that re- that like they drive past a restaurant that really looks like a McDonald's, but nothing on it says McDonald's, but also nothing right. on it says a fake brand that isn't McDonald's. But it's then they drive by McDonald's. A, right. I think you just don't see the name of it, but you look at the building. And you're like, that's the play place. Exactly. They drive past yeah. real Waffle Houses, though. Like that's Waffle House yep. as we know it. And they go to this mall. And it's a lot of these, like, instead of a Best Buy, it's called a, a, a good get or whatever. Like, all of these fake mm. stores in the mall, except for C's Candy. <laughs> I don't know how C's Candy got in there. The real candy store brand. But I was delighted. I liked them. I don't know. It's just like a, oh, it's, can- it's a candy store you'd find in a mall by, like, a Godiva or something like that. I don't know. Like, I don't think I've seen one in years. Do you know, maybe they'll have a little kiosk pop up around the holidays to get Christmas candies. Oh, but it's a real brand. And I loved what a mishmash that was. I don't think I've ever seen a movie. And it's like brands you were clearly not. That's not product placement. Waffle House didn't. Right. They're not advertising Waffle House. It's just back there in the background, like a tree or a stop sign is. I love that mishmash of real things, really baffling, odd, specific, real things and and these fun fake things. There was one that I caught um, that I I didn't recognize it as as something. But apparently, I think it was someone that worked on the movie. It was named after them. It was like their last name. And I was like, oh, I recognize that. Like that was one of the stores in the mall um, in, in the 
credits there, but I I don't know. Uh, I don't I don't see. I'm not. I'm like I'm looking at um, <laughs> names and stuff here on Wikipedia, oh. and I'm not seeing one. And those I are the remember <laughs> the oh, two well. main genres of businesses in movies. It's like a, a parody brand, Big fast food, or it's yeah. we named it after somebody on the crew. Or it's product placement. Yeah. But to see something yeah. like C's candies that is none of those things <laughs> is real odd. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, like, it is the Mitchells of candy stores. Like, they didn't put in a Godiva or a Ghirardelli or something. It's C's candies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. So what did you think of uh, the sequence in the mall? Because they've, they've been on this road trip for a while uh and the have they figured out that hey to shut down these robots they need to get to basically their equivalent of the mm. apple store uh and they, they can use the computers at the, at that store to shut them all down so that's where they go they say hey the nearest one is at this mall mm -hmm. uh, well, what did you think of the mall sequence it's great. I I love that one of the props that uh, the Furbies are in here. This is the Furby sequence yes. again. Like yeah. they could have made a fake Furby and they could have used a real Furby in a way that seemed like it was a commercial. But no, it's it's like this middle ground <laughs> like that's really a Furby. But just in this oddball way that does not feel like Furby asked it to be here. Furby is proud and excited to be included in Mitchell's versus the machines, which maybe they are. I don't know how the it's Furby brand sequence. feels about itself. <laughs> I think it, Furbies I, know the Furbies are in on the jokes that people tell about Furbies. They're they're long gone. I, I don't think they're still making them. So they exist. I don't think they're they're hot anymore, but I think Furbies still happen. There's like a new batch of Furbies quietly every year, but there's this giant Furby Secretly that they have invading. to fight against. And they use the string lights in the mall, which is something like every mall has just a curtain of string lights hanging down from the atrium. But nobody ever talks about this. I've never heard a person mention, <laughs> actively discuss <laughs> mall string lights. But this movie takes them and uses them as a plot device. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that, that mall sequence. Um, it really felt like just like, hey, this is some random mall that looks like every mall that you've ever been into. Middle of America. Just like there's nothing special about this mall. It's just a mall. Um, and yeah, like they, they have to uh, fight against a bunch of the robots in the there. But yeah, it devolves into them fighting against the Furbies, which is their own entity. Like they're not mixed up in the robots. It's 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 just that they are Furbies and Furbies are creepy enough on their own. <laughs> that it's just like I, they are I their own thing. They're being chased by a lot of appliances. I think like the robots mm -hmm. sent out some sort of a beacon. Like we call all other things it's, with a chip to our aid. Yeah, it, it's all it's it's a c comment on all of the ridiculous like smart de 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 devices. Like mm -hmm. you can get a smart f f fridge, or you can get a smart dryer and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's just like it's just like hey, if you have this pal technology, uh, then you are now a part of the robot apocalypse. Um, <laughs> yeah, then then they just have this like third entity that is also in there as the furbies and <laughs> they the the furbies are getting their their butts kicked but they're speaking in this like language that you yes. like it it's subtitled on screen because yeah. you can't un uh, understand it yeah and they're just like summon the mother god summon the mother yes. god stuff like that's <laughs> it's always good giant furby <laughs> oh, i always so we should have put weird. this on our tropes bingo sheet which is a cute creature speaking in a non-english language and it's subtitled and it's saying something very dark <laughs> very ominous yeah um or or or, or just simply furbies <laughs> Furby. <laughs> right we got we could have watched this we could have watched uncut gems i don't know what else <laughs> um yeah but it's 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 a 
great scene. And I, it's the first time that the family starts really working together. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, not the first exactly, but one of the moments where uh, not only are they working together, but they are starting to see more about sacrifice and stuff of 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 like, hey, dad just uh, went to go do this thing to buy us some time to go do that. He did the thing, but it didn't work. Now we have to go save him and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, and it it it. I think was a learning moment for the family to not only like, Hey, let's use our weird odd smarts, but like we actually have to work as a team and Mm -hmm. do this stuff. Um, So yeah, that, that, that was a good moment. And then that's when we get the, like, what if we walk in slow motion outside of this burning mall behind us? Right. (laughs) And and it's like the boom, boom, boom. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it, it was it was good. I want to talk Great about stuff. the two robot buddies that they pick up, uh, yeah. Eric and Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah bot five thousand. <laughs> I I love them. I, like the chips in their heads don't work right or something. Like whatever the attack code is that the AI sent all the robots like didn't reach them. So they're like on the Mitchells' side. They adopt the Mitchells as their family and the mom like completely adopts them back. Like those are my boys. You don't hurt my boys. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were wonderful. They got crushed by a dinosaur mm-hmm. uh, at, at the start, which is oh. why they did not get the code. Uh, it short circuited their brains. Right. Yes. Uh, and so they tried to, pass as humans by drawing faces on their faces <laughs> in sh- in sharpie <laughs> yes the things a sharpie can do in this world they've got more powerful right, sharpies yeah. than us yeah um and yeah they're wonderful they're great comic relief um they are used effectively as this like tool to locate the other robots or to get directions and mm-hmm stuff like that yeah they they um they they weren't my favorite characters but they worked out that like i i I like the inclusion of of them and it fit perfectly i i I love an out of touch pair of sidekicks like that to make another gravity falls reference that reminded me a little bit of xyler and crass (laughs) okay okay there you go um uh, so uh, speaking of g- Gravity Falls, both Mike Rionda and Jeff Rao were former writers on Gravity F- Falls. Uh, you can, you can so tell. Yeah, the go. character designs reminded me of Gravity Falls and the 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 great family dynamic where you've got these two siblings who are legit friends with each other. Like there's no sibling tension. It's them versus adults. Yeah who like like them but just don't get them and are just worried about them exactly exactly uh so let's see we get they 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 finally get to their destination which is now which is like the main server uh that has all of this this you know, so i i guess i should say the old phone pal yeah. I, I guess is what we'll call her um has created this like giant obelisk this like v-shaped b- building from the future that's floating kind of and like that was uh, like their yeah like the pa- pal industries had like a weird <laughs> you know rhombus of a building to begin with and it seems like she just made more of those and they are the spaceships that will send humanity off of the planet yeah well it started to do that v shape and i I was wondering if they were gonna do like a doomsday clock kind mm. of thing with that but that's not what they did um but yeah so they 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 make this building and that's their headquarters and they are producing more of these robots uh and that's where they're storing all of the hu- humans uh and and stuff like that you see these like hexagonal uh pods with the humans in this like neon pink flying through the sky to this thing um and that is where the mitchells are going that's their final destination to confront pal uh and they finally 
do, and that that's where the big action sequence happens. Uh, both the mom and dead dad gets ca- captured, uh, but they have this running joke in the entire film that the dad has made them all buy these yes. like, special screw drivers, which it, is the it, exact they... <laughs> kind of screw driver they need to break out of this thing. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it's like I think it was like the wife's anniversary present, uh, the daughter's sweet sixteen <laughs> yeah. present, and what the son found under his pillow when he lost her tooth. <laughs> the tooth fairy, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, and so uh, they 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 have the scene where the dad is like, "This is perfect. I can b- break out. I've been preparing them my whole life," you know, um, and he breaks out. He helps the mom g- 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 get out, uh, but man, the mom has like action moment galore here on this Love one the mom. she goes full rambo on on this yeah um she uh so is it that they hurt the the two robot sidekicks or that they hurt the son and capture him i, I forget what the inciting one, event was one of that her makes boys her, like, i don't know <laughs> i was eating yeah, pizza at this time it's okay. So you you were uh, too busy eating making did cheese. My, <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> my attention was a little divided. Yes, <laughs> that's fair. But yeah, so uh, the mom ends up going full action hero. It's like no one touches my babies, uh, and she starts whooping butt, uh, and it's amazing. The dad also starts doing the same thing they have a a, a good like father daughter moment um and yeah they just they they start working together as a family and they make this thing happen and they save the day um (laughs) but i i i think it's so i think to talk about the end we also need to talk about the visuals of the whole like robot stuff because Mm -hmm. I feel most of this movie is very orange and brown. And I mean, of of course, there's all these extra like memes and flourishes and stuff that Mm -hmm. add on to that. But they are driving like in the like heartland, right? Where it's like browns and golds and oranges and stuff like that. And I think most of the movie is that. But when they do the robot stuff it is these like bl- blues and pinks and purples and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that and it is this much more sleek almost tron l- 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 looking uh stuff <laughs> there um what did you think of the like the visual aesthetics of the more robot side oh i, d- I dug it a lot This movie's got a lot of great color palettes. I love that when the robots arrive, they arrive at sunset and the sky is drenched in like a lot of pinks and oranges and the robots arrive and they're very neon. I dug it a lot. (laughs) My favorite running joke in the movie is that the robots don't know how to categorize their dog. Like they've got this big, chunky, goofy looking pug and the robots look at the dog. and the real thing that happened. Right. If if I'm not mistaken, that's a real thing that happened or th- 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 there's a meme of of, of oh. that or, or something <laughs> like there there that that is a legitimate thing. It's not it's not just something that they oh. made up for the movie. <laughs> the robots look at the dog and they don't know how to categorize it. And they're like, dog, pig, dog, pig, dog, pig, loaf of bread. And then, and then their brains can't handle it and they overload and explode. And at the end, that's how they stop the robots is that the dad has to find out how to access YouTube on this big mega computer. All he has to do is get to you, yeah. www.youtube.com and like find one of the do- Katie's videos about the dog. And then the robots will see the dog. It find it incomprehensible and explode. Circuit. Yeah. So yeah. that's real, like a robot, uh, like artificial intelligence in our world can't figure out what a pug is and it thinks it's bread. I don't know if it's necessarily <laughs> pugs in general, but yeah, I, I remember hearing about that. Like it, there there was the, like this meme of like, is this a dog or is that a loaf of 
bread or so or you've 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 seen the the memes too, too of like those like really small curly brown dogs and it's like yes. is, is it a dog or is it fried chicken yes <laughs> legs or hot thing. dogs yeah right yeah 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 <laughs> legs or hot dogs yeah that one too yeah it's that same it's that same thing but they, they've had that like is this a dog or is this a loaf of bread or is this a pig <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i that it was a great joke they do it like three times never got tired of it yeah well the the whole the whole thing is is like they use the dog as the like hood <laughs> ornament yeah so when they're driving all of the robots will see that instead and and then like uh, and sh- sh- short circuit out um <laughs> yeah it's so good i love it a lot this this movie is so freaking funny it's so good <laughs> i also love when the uh there's like a a pre-flight announcement for uh foolish human airlines <laughs> <laughs> the exits are nowhere the flight is forever the destination is the dark void of space <laughs> oh man this movie is so good i love it mm-hmm. it's good it's good um but but yeah so they they save the day robot apocalypse is no more um and then they finish bringing katie to college uh, where she goes and finally meets all of her f- 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 friends. Uh, I don't know if they mentioned it before or all of this stuff, but uh, Katie is openly gay, 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 gay. Uh, and at the end, they just they they like mention it, and that's it. And that was the first t- 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 time, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, um, like I think when she it's first meets this girl she mentions like there's this girl jade who like we'd like all the same stuff and i think she's really cool like you can kind of tell she has a crush on her and there's so many visual details in this movie i think 45 minutes in i'm like i think she's a rainbow button on her hoodie but I can't. there's so much I, to look I, at I, I you could easily miss any it. of that yeah yeah i i had no idea and so when when i i, I I believe it was the mom who asked like so when are you and jj gonna be a f- official i was like Huh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> Very cute. I, like this. I also like the, Good stuff. the whenever we see her texting Supportive Jade, mom, Jade's screen right? name is Jade Runner 2049. <laughs> That's a great, great name. I didn't notice that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um Yeah, th- like this it has so much it like so much just fills the screen. Uh and it makes for great texture and all mm-hmm. sorts of stuff. So Good, good movie with that indeed. Um, I don't know. Did did we miss something? Is there something else you want to <laughs> talk about? Did, did we skip something? That's mostly it. I, don't, I I had a great time. It's really fun. It's really sweet. <laughs> Visually so rich. It is definitely a movie with a lot of rewatch value to it. Yeah. Um, actually, one last thing I want to look up. At the end of this movie, oh, apparently yeah. there is a real family, the real yes. Mitchells. Um, and next to I everybody's names in the credits, you, you get like an old family or like childhood picture of them, which, which is, is delightful. Great. You get to see like yeah. seven-year-old John Legend. <laughs> it's nice. Awesome. Um I don't know. Let's see. I I don't know if it has anything. I don't I'm not seeing anything on their Wikipedia about the real Mitchells. I I I don't know if it's a case of they changed the name so that mm-hmm. they're not actually a Mitchells, yeah. but it's just based on another family. Is this based yeah. on the Millers of Christopher Miller? I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was like um. Yeah, it seemed like it was the director's family, maybe, because I think the in credits is like, this is the real Mitchells. And then his little arrow, it says, and that one's me. Yeah, I, I so I, I don't know exactly uh, what that means. It was a little bit unclear, but it, it was just, yeah, it was neat. I was like, oh, like, this is based on a real family, not real events, obviously, <laughs> but just this, like this, this oddball 
family that maybe doesn't necessarily always understand one another's mm-hmm. interests and stuff like that. But, you know, hey, they have each other's backs. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think as the, I think that's one of the things that happens to kids as they grow older is they start to understand certain things of, of, of like, oh, that's why my parents did this mm-hmm. thing. Or they get the opportunity to talk with them about certain things like that. And it's just like, oh, okay. Now that makes sense. Like why you made these choices or, you know, why I thought you were such a dick all of this time. You you were hoping to do this instead. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so... Good stuff. This is yeah. a great movie. I loved it. Mm-hmm. It was good indeed. Uh, okay. Should we jump into our first round of bingo? Bingo! bingo so we bingo, came bingo. up with a list of like 75 uh, plot tropes, and then each of us yes. picked like 24 individually. I put mine into a random bingo card generator. So we've got 24 plus a free space. And one of the tropes that I had uh, on my list was adult doesn't understand kid. That is a good one. Uh, Let's see. I'm looking through mine. Um, Let's see. I don't know if I had many on mine. I so I have vehicle and peril, but I, I don't know if that's what we were talking about exactly. Um, yeah, I, I think the the two that I could potentially do would be vehicle and peril and fake fast food name. I don't remember a specific fake that's fast all, food all brand. Like what, we what like they drive say? past that. Hmm? Oh, Melissa, you are freezing on oh, me. Beans. Why is that? I have lost you. Oh, I... are you back? Or are you still? Oh, you're back now. I Hello? think I can hear you. Hello. Hi. You know Hi, what it can is? You hear me? I was drawing on my image of my bingo card, and I clicked save, and apparently that takes a lot out of Windows to save that you've oh, drawn man. a circle on a picture interesting okay good to know um how do you feel about fake fast food name because i i i I feel like we meant that maybe a little more specifically yeah yeah what happened in 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 this but does that also apply to other like fake stores in in general like they had good good they had good get which is best buy (sighs) i I don't know. I don't remember if that's something we specifically outlined. I, I, uh, I don't think we. M- 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 yeah, we can. It. We can. Yeah, we can go for just any fake, like obvious dupe fake brand. We were thinking about like uh, Dairy okay. Duchess, Burger Lord, Wick Donald's, uh, <laughs> Taco Beacon, Jeff in the Box. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll mark as a fake fast food name. That's the one that I got for this one here. But yeah, so just ju- 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 just just to uh, give you all some examples of stuff that we have on our card, I will read off a few of mine, and then maybe Melissa, you can read off yeah. a few of yours just to share what's on on there. So yeah, I mentioned vehicle in peril. Uh, however, we have a stipulation that it's just it cannot be a regular car crash it has to be like it's hanging off a bridge or something like that uh i also have a training montage i have a magical book uh i have a mysterious scar uh a fight in the rain an ancient Mm -hmm. evil mom in an (laughs) apron uh and an actor who appears as themselves yeah, I have a lot of those, too. I have um, 
character gives another character a lot of exposition or backstory. And then the other character says, why are you telling me this? Uh, I have I, tall we, guy I, I, and small guy are friends. <laughs> we almost had that uh, in this one. Um, I have uh, meeting yourself from another time. If you're here and I'm here, then who's driving the bus? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And a superhero fight through a building. Uh, yes, and the classic, you throw an object and off screen, you hear a window crash or a cat meow. Or both. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be crossing off fake fast food brand. Uh, we'll, we're expanding that to just in or, any store or restaurant. Sure. Uh, and sure, adult sure. doesn't understand kid. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one, indeed. Um, cool. Well, that's what we got for our bingo update. With that, mm -hmm. Melissa, what would you recommend to uh, p people who liked this movie? Uh, well, we've already talked about a goofy movie and Gravity Indeed, Falls. Yeah. I want to shout out Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. That's a lot of fun. I like that movie a lot. Uh, the plot of this movie reminded me of Small Soldiers, which I don't think you've seen. Is that correct? I saw it a long time ago when I was a kid. I, I don't remember anything about it. It's a movie about um, these this line of G.I. Joe type toys that are going to have a smart chip in them and they accidentally get or on purpose through some sort of uh, espionage. I don't remember. It's been a long time for me too. the chip that yeah. gets put into these toys is like a high end like government intelligence chip. So instead of being a little G.I. Joe that like remembers your name and is like, let's right, go yeah. into battle, Jared instead it's like all right well i'm an intelligent soldier and i'm here to, i'm here to scout the perimeter like they get taken to this house and then they start waging war against the inhabitants of the house because they think they're the enemies so it's the small soldiers this little band of gi joe toys against uh other smart toys that are more peaceful that are like we don't like we will defend our land but we would like to be friends with the small soldiers <laughs> haven't seen it in forever yeah. but i remember really liking it uh, and visually, this movie reminded me a lot of the Cartoon Network show, The Amazing World of Gumball. Do you know that okay. one? I'm familiar. I haven't seen it myself, but I know it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd, I I watched it when I was in college and I was watching a lot of cartoons at that time. I haven't seen it in ages. I don't know if it has wrapped up, how it wrapped up. Don't know. But it's a it's a very fun show just about a young boy named gumball living with his family you know having arguments and crushes and things like that with kids at school getting into schemes but it's got a really neat like it's digitally animated but it's got this multimedia look to it like characters have got like wildly different design styles you know there's some characters who look 3d who look 2d who look like claymation everybody looks so wildly different from another it's a really fun cool. whimsical show to look at Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I think my recommendations might be more for an older audience uh, than than uh, what this movie is. But if you if you liked if you liked the, the, this one, uh, I, I think the first thing I would re recommend is Attack the Block. Um, oh, where it that's just good. Has this, like over the top visual style. Um, it's very fast paced it's action uh, but yeah it is uh the, maybe more of an adult movie there's a bunch more language in there a lot more b blood uh and stuff like that but it's very anime inspired um yeah i i would recommend that uh and then my next one is definitely more uh a adult centric uh for some reason this is kind of reminding me of sex criminals um and, and yeah. in, in in the weird way that there's all these like references and stuff in the back yes. you got around and just a lot of like weird things happening um that one is about a couple uh that find out they can stop time when they orgasm uh, and so they do what a a a a a anyone would do. And uh, Rob Banks 
<laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- that's yeah. also a, a comic with that's just packed with little background details and in jokes. And there's this great mm-hmm. meta sequence where like they, they go to a karaoke bar and the girl is singing yeah. Fat Bottom Girls, and supposedly that's when the guy like fell in love with her. But like all of the pa- and it's illustrated wonderfully. She's doing this dance. Everybody in the bar gets up and dances with her. And all of the word bubbles are like, hey, so it's Matt and Chip here. We really wanted to buy the rights to this song to print it in the comic book, but we couldn't. Uh, so just <laughs> imagine that Fat Bottom Girl is happening right here. <laughs> it's great. It's so <laughs> yeah. good. Um, yeah, I, I think those would be my recommendations. Because, yeah, I mean, we've... Oh, Actually, I have one more that I can recommend. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of the same studio that brought you Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, I'd say go watch the live-action Tom Holland Spider-Man films, especially Far From Home. I I think uh, because Far From Home starts with the sequence similar to this one where they are like mixing uh animation and la 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 live action and 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 st- and stuff like that when they do the announcements and oh and, my god st- and stuff like that it's so funny. god those announcements um, yeah so there you go <laughs> good stuff <laughs> good round of good round of suggestions here kyle are you ready for the pitches i am ready okay So in your own life right now, you are watching The Sopranos and you're almost done. And you were telling me recently that you're like last night. Hot beans. Okay, I'm very excited for us to discuss this on Friday then. So before you mention that, um, yeah, so I on the captain's log, I mentioned I I had five left. Not true. I only had two left. I thought I had five left, but I had two. So I I did get to. watch the end on friday night so if you want to hear more of my thoughts on the sopranos tune in to the captain's log uh this next week so very excited for that conversation and you were saying that you were disappointed that it didn't include more crime so i got three crime pitches for you today kyle hey there we go uh none of them are like mafia type crime two are murder and one is like uh sort of espionage spy stuff there you go right so pitch number one is a movie from last year probably had a a miniature theatrical release and was released on vod somewhere this is a movie called the kid detective uh a once celebrated kid detective now in his 30s continues to solve the same trivial mysteries between hangovers and bouts of self-pity until a naive client brings him his first adult case to find out who brutally murdered her boyfriend. This stars uh, Adam Brody, who we've appreciated on the show before. He was the brother in Ready or Not, which we watched last year. He did a great performance. Yeah, and he's just playing this like adult Encyclopedia Brown character who's like still trying to live that life, but he's getting deeper into uh, darker crimes. Interesting. I like a good boy detective, uh, like yeah. Detective Conan, but he's yeah. grown up and he's just like, oh, I'm still doing this shit. Come on, man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I heard him um, uh plug this on comedy bang bang i think i think it's a dark comedy movie i'm not exactly sure i just heard him talk about it so i haven't seen a a clip or a trailer or anything so we could watch the mystery that is the kid detective uh pitch number two a very well-known case featuring real detectives we could watch david fincher's zodiac Mm, i actually have this is a 2007 yeah 2007 movie Starring Iron Man, the Hulk, and Mysterio. Uh, In the late 1960s and 1970s, fear grips the city of San Francisco as a serial killer called Zodiac stalks its residents. You're familiar. Uh, Investigators and reporters become obsessed with learning the killer's identity and bringing him to justice. Meanwhile, Zodiac claims victim after victim and taunts the authorities with cryptic messages, ciphers, and menacing phone calls. I'm not so much of a true crime person but i've always been intrigued by this movie the posters like the the golden gate bridge covered in fog it seems like just a really 
moody, atmospheric sort of film. I've always yeah. been curious to check it out. I don't Inter's know, if, but really I've always been good at at that at making yeah. that like, atmosphere. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe we'd give it a try. Uh, and pitch well, number three is something I've pitched to you before. This is the TV show The Night Manager. Uh, this is six episodes uh, long. I think it's on Amazon Prime right now. It came out in like, I don't, I don't know, 2014, 15. I think I was still living at my parents' house. I don't remember. Uh, it says, based on Jean Le Carre's novel of the same name, The Night Manager is a crime drama following the work of former British soldier Jonathan Pine. Hotel night porter Pine is contacted by an intelligence operative who asks for his assistance to spy on international businessman Richard Roper. The entrepreneur is believed to have forged a criminal alliance between the secret arms trade and the intelligence community, prompting the need for surveillance. Pine attempts to infiltrate Roper's inner circle by becoming a felon himself, while keeping his mission a secret from his hotel colleagues and his girlfriend. This stars uh, uh, Loki, Tom Hiddleston, who we'll get to see me Loki again soon, and Hugh nice. Laurie and Elizabeth Debicki. An excellent cast. Yeah, I've always been curious. Uh, this is another thing that I've been meaning to check out for ages. Uh, and it seems like you might like it. Seems like it might be good podcast material. Like an interesting one indeed. Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. These are good ones. Um. I want to go with Kid Detective because I, I I I hadn't heard of that one and yeah I I I do really like the boy detective stuff but I've never seen yes. it where it's like let's take that but what if he grows up? Yeah, uh, it's it does kind of remind me of Spencer and Locke. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, I, 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 I guess that is a similar thing. Yeah. There, but I guess Calvin and Hobbes weren't boy detectives. <laughs> no, they just were or in that story. Boy de de detective and tiger. Yeah. Cub um, detective. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. So the 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 kid detective that that's the name, right? Yeah, yeah, I looked it up. Um, since it's a more recent movie, I think it's you might still have to pay a couple dollars for it somewhere. It looked like it was streaming on That's like cool. or like if you've got premium Hulu, I think it was on Stars. I happen to have it like a I, I treated myself to a couple months of Stars. So gotcha, cool. You'll find it somewhere. Well, it's around for for that one. Yeah, one I haven't heard of so. Uh, that's what we will be diving into this next week. I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. This week's new episode was the uh, 1980s canadian forest animal antics cartoon the raccoons which we knew nothing about um we wound up being very charmed by it very cute show interesting good stuff you guys can find me at yo kyle springer on twitter if you guys want to stay up to date with all this all of the stuff that we do here at the whatnots uh we are at the whatnots on twitter we just got to interview Greg Miller from Kind of Funny and who will also be one of the hosts of E3 2021. Uh, and you guys should go check that out. That's on our Crossplay podcast. Uh, so you guys can find that when you just type in the whatnots on your favorite podcasting app. Uh, and that was good. It was cool. It was fun. Um, nice. Yeah. That is about it. Go like, share, subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that stuff. Uh, we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye.